Hello and welcome. This is the beginning of a new series, and in this, what we're doing basically is that we have uh, we are consolidated uh, all the numerous questions that's been asked uh, in our webinars, which has been continuing faithfully for like three years now, and across uh, hundreds of clients, thousands of assignments that, that you've done in the past 16 years. So what you've done is most of these questions are basically uh, repetitive by nature, but very interesting questions. And uh, so what we thought, let us just consolidate all these queries, make a comprehensive series of Q&As that, that can be helped to uh, enlighten our, our clients on um, various compliance level issues. So here goes. So today's question is what we are what we are asked more, many a time that is SOC 2 or SOC 1, type 1 or type 2. So whether it is uh, whether we should go in for a type 1 report or a type 2 report how would it matter and what should we do? So here goes. So the answer is, first of all, I'm sure that you must have been through, most of you rather would have been through or seen or heard what uh, ISMS or an ISO audit is all about. So there are two levels to the audit. First is a stage one audit where the auditor just comes and checks all your documentation, checks all uh, your control framework. Now when you're talking about a control framework, what do you mean? We are talking about control levels at three, at three levels. First, administrative, logical and technical what i mean by that first administrative would be all your policies procedures work instruction record format and um, technical would be all your firewalls antivirus patching waf network design and stuff and the third would be a logical which is basically how you're controlling access to your resources via various methodologies and a login authentication authorization and stuff so how is that happening and the next thing that is checked is with the, the type of control, you know, whether uh, it's a good amalgamation of uh, corrective controls, preventive controls or detective controls. I'm sure you know what that means. So with this three by three matrix, he checks what is your design framework, control design framework all about. And the next is as is a type one audit is an as on date. So if we are doing the audit today, if our auditor comes and does the audit today, Say for example, for chain management, I'll simply be asking, okay, show me one or two change reports or antivirus, I'll simply check whether your antivirus is up to date. Or if you're talking about problem resolution, I'll be checking your last sequence. That's what a stage one audit is all about. And that's what a type one is. So it's a type, it's a point in time audit. As on date, you're fine. Okay, but it doesn't check whether you've been doing this effectively or just, you know, crammed at the last minute for your audit. So, but in a type 2 things are different. In a type 2 audit, you'll basically, the auditor will basically be checking the evidence of effective and diligent use of the controls for at least the past six months, minimum six months, it can even be one year, nine months, one year, whatever, depends on the auditor's call. Minimum six months audit, uh, what is a um, evidence of implementation, successful and consistent implementation is required. So. If you're looking at what is good for you or a type 1 or a type 2, by default, if a client has any seriousness in the work to be done, they'll be asking for a type 2. Rarely you've seen clients asking and our clients where their clients have asked for a type 1. That also happens when they are very much crammed on time. What I mean by that? Well, for a type 1 audit, uh, basically you have to get all your policies, procedures in place. So minimum that takes, depending on the scope, maybe three months at least. So. In three months, you've got your documentation in place, you can get the audit done. But for a type two, then you need, depending on your maturity level, you need three months plus five, six months again for the gestation period and the evidence collection. And you have eight to nine months as audit frame. After that, the audit happens, which will be another a month, then the report generation, another two months. So you're looking at maybe 10 months approximate exercise. So if you're not really cramming for time, I would suggest you to go for a type 2. Well, you'll be having clients who will tell you do a type 1 instead of a type 2. And why would that be? First of all, very categorically, type 1 is not a mandate for type 2. Type 2 includes type 1. So it is nothing that you have to do a type 1 before you do a type 2. We have seen some other consulting and certification and attestation bodies saying that and that is wrong it is unethical to say that because no such guidelines have been laid out by the AICPA you can directly go in for a type 2 it will be cheaper and faster well then why do companies say that do a type 1 and then do a type 2 well I think the answer is simple they make more money if you are 
very much cram for time like you need to get it much done within like three months time go in for a type one and the client really is okay with you doing a type one then do go for a type one otherwise you do a type one and then the client would say no i'm looking for a client type two and you are done the, that money is wasted the time is wasted the auditor gets to make more money so if you're looking for a type one first of all check with your client whether they will accept a type one otherwise go in for a type two if you have the time go in for a type two if you're looking for a good audit body uh, attestation auditors you can reach out to us you can uh, see our website on the screen www.vistainfosec.com or you can um, shoot us a mail on sales at vistainfosec.com or and if you have any further queries or comments or suggestions do drop us an email on ask us at vistainfosec.com until next time stay safe bye bye